So, uh, I, I, there, there's another candidate that, that I was, uh, that, that my attention was, uh, prompted to, um, and, uh, uh, I didn't know about this guy at all until I started looking him up a couple days ago, and I looked up his website, so I'm not going to do a crazy in-depth look into this person just yet, um, that's sort of an ongoing type of process. But, but he is an interesting candidate. Uh, Steve Bullock, Governor Steve Bullock from Montana. His big claim is that he is a Democratic governor that won uh, the Demo- uh, became the governor of that state where Trump swept it. Trump swept Montana. But there's a Democrat in charge of that state. So his thing is like, I think I could fucking win over a bunch of Trump supporters because I know how to talk to people that are Trump supporters. Um, and, you know, uh, it was from, like, somebody responded, hashtag let bullet, de- let bullet debate uh, on, on, my, on my Instagram post. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And I looked him up, and he's actually a pretty interesting candidate. Uh, you know, so I, re- I do read the comments. Uh, and, and sometimes they do influence the content of videos. Uh, but Bullock is an interesting guy. Like I said, Democratic governor of a pretty Republican state of Montana. His, his big thing on his website is cracking down on dark money, uh, major fi- campaign finance reform, uh, banning super PACs. I like that. And overturning Citizens United. In fact, I think it was an age, a, a, attorney general that fought against Citizens United. Um, I think that's sort of his big, big claim to fame. Uh, the, the, the now, unfortunately, deranged Rachel Maddow has talked about this guy as, as like, the ho- like the shining light to Citizens United or some shit. And one of his speeches, he says, we kicked the Koch brothers out of our state so we can take out any other, you know, uh, corporate special interest that is not for uh, the will of the people. Uh, most of his introductory video is pretty great. Um, and uh, there's one part that kind of gets contradictory because one of the first things on his website is this election is more than defeating Donald Trump. But his introductory video ends with we have to defeat Donald Trump. And I was like, you fucking, you, you, ha- you almost had me to be like, yeah, I'll throw my fucking weight behind this guy. And then you threw the whole, like, we got to defeat Trump thing. You fucking went Kamala Harris on me. You went like any blue will do on me. And I, no, no, it's more about, it's more than defeating Donald Trump. Like your website says, but your video doesn't say that. So which one is it, Mr. Steve Bullock? Is it more about defeating Donald Trump or is it about defeating Donald Trump? I think it should be more. That can't be your flagship fucking thing that you're running on is that I, I will beat Donald Trump. I will do it. That's not a fucking campaign rally. Nobody gives a shit. You're not going to win progressives over that way. And you're sure shit not going to turn those, those you know, middle of the road fucking Republicans over that way. But the dude's interesting, man. Uh, he kind of believes in a lot of the progressive things. Universal health care, uh, reversing Trump-era climate change stuff, right? Going back to the Paris Agreement, um, you know, uh, 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 taxing the, the uh, oil companies, um, you know, $15 an hour minimum wage. Which, look, I get it. I understand the idea behind the $15 an hour minimum wage. But I, at this point, you know... In 2012, that was probably, like, an appropriate amount of money. Uh, but, uh, but now, you know, we're probably looking at, like, 20 in order to keep up with inflation. Maybe more. Maybe 22. But, you know, I get it. You're, you're standing behind people. You're standing behind workers to, to, to get raises, uh, to, to con- consistently increase the minimum wage, uh, as as the the rate of inflation and, and market value of things go up, uh, like rent has increased by like seventy five percent, but but like worker 
uh, salaries have only increased by like 5% or something. That's a statistic I remember reading. Um, so I get it. I understand. I understand what he's talking about. Uh, I think it should be more than $15 an hour. That's just me. I'm kind of fucking kooky that way. Uh, better benefits for people with multiple jobs. So this is where things start getting interesting, right? Uh, there's a lot of labor. There's a lot of uh, fair fair work uh, unionization type stuff on his website. Uh, and, you know, better benefits for people with multiple jobs. If you're working multiple jobs, then, yeah, you should have a little bit of an easier access to... Uh, you know, things like food stamps or health care or dental, things that you shouldn't have to con- be concerned about. Um, he's pro-union, pro-big business taxation. Uh, this was something interesting that was on his website as well, uh, which was a work working family tax credit. Basically, you get a tax credit for every on your paycheck. So every time you get paid, you get a working family tax credit. So it's like an earned income tax credit plus UBI rolled into one that you get every single paycheck. Um, So I thought that was an interesting way to introduce that concept because it might, what might end up happening is if you get this guy teaming up with somebody like Andrew Yang, uh, you might be able to get UBI integrated into the American economic system, into the American workforce, within the four years of the next presidency. Because I I don't hate that idea. It's super interesting. Um, And nobody else has kind of proposed this this kind of an idea, but it is a way that you kind of like ease conservatives who are uncomfortable with the idea of universal basic income because it's quote unquote free money or 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 whatever or whatever weird thing that that they want to call uh, universal basic income to be right um, I could call it innovative income you know like it just it just helps you innovate more it helps you come focus on your ideas worry less about things uh, to balance but I thought that was a very very interesting idea here's another interesting idea that's on his website too office of rural affairs my wife and I go you know back and forth about this shit all the time is you know what's going on with the rural communities and I tour through a bunch of rural communities all the time I drive through these farm areas all the time and these farm areas usually like it's like no service I bitched about that. I bitched about this on Road Reflections before. Is like, there's no fucking service. And I can't listen to my podcast or my fucking Spotify. And I bitch about it all day long, right? Office of Rural Affairs sounds like it's a very interesting idea. And it would take care of a forgotten group of people. We're paying attention to what's going on in San Francisco with the tech stuff. Because it's the tech stuff. We're not paying attention to the homeless population and the income disparity that the tech company industry has brought into San Francisco and New York City, and they tried to do with Pittsburgh, and that might happen in Seattle and Portland, you know. But we talk about these bigger cities because they're they're hubs for all these amazing technologies and job growth and and it's the cool hip place to be in where people come out and the first thing they do is ask you what your pronouns are and all that fun happy but you know the middle of the country still fucking matters they still they they still you know they need to be talked to and and you can educate them and you can kind of be patient with them too rural america is still important Rural America is what I'm, I'm. I'm in fucking rural America right now. I'm driving through it right fucking now. You know, I I see these cool fucking farm machines all over the place, uh, and, and and I know they're struggling, and I know they don't want to be forgotten, and that's sort of that's sort of the 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 the, the interesting thing about it. The goofy thing that, that that is about it is what has been sold to them is if these sort of minority communities start getting rights, the same rights that they do, uh, well, there isn't enough rights to go around. They look at equal rights as a finite resource when equality is an infinite resource. 
marriage equality is an infinite resource. Gay people getting married doesn't mean that you don't get to keep your marriage. Like, you can still hate your wife. You know what I mean? Like, you can still have your unhappy marriage. You know, your fucking prototypical sitcom marriage. That's still valid. And so is gay people's marriage. Gay people getting paid without being discriminated in the workforce doesn't mean that you get discriminated in the workforce now. That's not how it works. Equality is not a, 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 a finite resource. Oil is a finite resource, and that's something that uh, Steve Bullock is fighting for, is, is fighting against the oil companies that come in and buy up farmland and poison. They poison the farmland. They poison the land that these people grow food on and have water on and cattle and and, uh, and and their families live on this land. And these oil companies come in and they fucking poison that land. That and, and by the way, oil is a finite resource. We should not be using all of that shit up. That's not what it's fucking meant there for. And by using all of it up, we're fucking up the world, including rural America. <laughs> But, uh, you know, one of the other things that he, he wants to do with this Office of Rural Affairs is uh, end the tariff war. Constantly fighting over the tariff war about uh, import-export, you know, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, again, this is not where I'm particularly the strongest at. But I do understand that American farmers, and rural America particularly, does not like the tariff war. Um, and a lot of people will give me the whole free market thing, but, you know, who's it fucking helping at the end of the day? Not the regular old working farmers. Uh, he, can, he, he says that he can bring $10 billion back in the agricultural world. $10 billion back. Um, and then the Office of Foreign Affairs will also be uh, in, in charge of regional food systems like distributing uh, farm food, things that don't go into into the, the, the grocery stores and things of that sort. Uh, support local farms through these programs to help um, poor communities uh, and food banks and, uh, 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 you know, uh, low-income food for schools and things of that sort. Um, and I know the, the U.S. Department of Agriculture already does it because when I was in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, uh, 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 just about a week ago, I was having a conversation with somebody that works for the, uh, the Agricultural Department, and, and that's what she does is she works with farms to help them, like, uh, donate, like, you know, produce and shit to schools that need it for low-income families so that kids don't starve in schools. Um, so that's, he's saying that the, the Office of, 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 of Rural Affairs would be in charge of something like that. So I'm, I'm assuming that it would probably work in tandem with the Agricultural Department. Um, and I think this would kind of be like a, a little bit of, 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 a, of an oversight to the Agricultural Department. Uh, what is it? it? Oh, the other thing was increased disaster aid. Uh, I thought that was also interesting, right? Because some of these guys go through like tornadoes or hurricanes, flooding, uh, basically all the fucking climate change shit that's going on. Dry, increased dry seasons, um, that sort of stuff. And, and he's he was basically like, we'll have a response team in place to to help. We'll put a response team in place to help these people because that's what they need. They need some help because they've gone through a, a pretty bad time. And I think that's awesome. That's what, Again, this is helping taking care of people the way that they need to be taken care of. Talked about the oil companies. Oh, man, this is a, this is a huge one. Connect rural America with high-speed broadband internet. Fuck yeah, dude. That's a big one for me. <laughs> like, I, have, I I don't know if I've told this story on here or not, but I remember being in Colfax, Iowa, which is an hour outside Des Moines, Iowa, right? It was like the first time I ever played Des Moines. I think I was in like Ankeny or some shit. But I, I went to this hotel. It was a super cheap hotel, and the internet wasn't particularly working. And I called the front desk, and, they're, and, they, and the woman literally was just like, what are you going to do? And I was like, yeah, okay. I get it. You guys can't do anything about it because you guys are also in the same fucked up situation that I'm in. And uh, and then I was like, all right. So I woke up early. I went to this like 
coffee shop, right? That's supposed to have like better, faster internet. And I, it was so slow. Like a video that normally takes about 10 minutes to upload on YouTube took like five hours. That's fucking crazy. And it's like you wonder why rural America doesn't really have an, have like an understanding of, of, of some of these more sort of esoteric identitarian crises or problems or issues is because they're not exposed to it for one. And for two, how can they be when all of those alternative independent media uh, uh, outlets are all blocked. They're not getting. They're not getting the fucking internet coverage. So the only thing that they can deal with is corporate media. So they listen to the bullshit that's on CNN and Fox News and MSNBC, and that's all they know and that's all they understand, because that's all it is. Because the internet's so fucking slow. Their in, their access to internet information is just blocked. And this dude's like, yeah, we're gonna get you that information. That's fucking great. That's what Modi's trying to do in India with his internet thing. Right, and there's a bunch of problems with what Modi's doing in India, and there's a lot of workarounds to it. But fuck yeah, I'm glad there's somebody talking about it in the United States because I go to these communities a whole fucking bunch, and a lot of times, like even in Erie, Pennsylvania, like Erie, Pennsylvania also has slower internet, and that's like a, you know that used to be a big uh, industrial city and shit. He wants to uh, fight climate change using for, for you know uh, using agricultural means. You can fight climate change through the agricultural means. Uh, rotational farming—that's a way to do it. Um, about maybe a year ago or something, I, I had a couple videos that I did on like food stuff, like organic food, um, the cost of organic food, um, and uh, and like uh, alternative like food waste and things of that sort. But I brought up rotational farming and vertical farming as two alternative methods uh, to dealing with that sort of stuff, right? Uh, and uh, and I thought that was that was the way to go. That is the way to go. That's the way that you kind of save that save save the farms. Uh, and big one, clean water. That's a big one. He's got some interesting ideas. Clean water. I'm all about it, right? And that that that's related back to the fucking fracking shit. Because f- fucking oil, like I said, the oil companies come in, they take these people's lands, and they start drilling, and then they start poisoning the fucking water and shit. They put chemicals and stuff in there because they need to they, they need to treat the oil. Like all that stuff is fucking awful. Clean water is a big one. America should not be a country where 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 clean water, right? We tout her to, America touts itself to be the greatest fucking nation in the whole goddamn universe, and and. There's a bunch of cities where you can't get access to clean water. Flint, Michigan, even in Pittsburgh, right? I'm sure there's a bunch more. If I'm missing some, please leave a comment. Tell me other cities that uh, that don't have clean water. So Steve Bullock is somebody that I'm going to have to do um, a little bit more of a deep dive on. Um, yeah, he seems interesting. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, This is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, You can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. uh, Share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, And another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Krish Mohan. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.